We've Nothing. mostly been finding glass, a few different kinds. Yeah, so uh, but there's some slates, a nail, some glass, some metal. Uh, my name is Mark Castro. I'm a staff archaeologist at Colonial Williamsburg, and I'm also a, a doctoral student in anthropology at the College of William and Mary. And we're here doing an excavation around the Bradford Inn, which was uh, used as an Indian school in the 18th century. Uh, the Indian school is something that was part of the William and Mary's original charter uh, in 1693. Uh, it was part of the original mission of the college. Uh, the first years uh, that Indians are brought to William and Mary, to Williamsburg, is 1711, 1712. And then this building is built specifically to house and educate those Indians in 1723. Um, but uh, around the time of the American Revolution, the funding for the Indian school is lost. And so that's the last year that they, uh, the, the school is in operation here. I am a member of the Pulmonkey Indian Tribe. What drew me to, to the project here at the Bradford was um, the fact that Pulmonkey people as boys went to the school in the 18th century. It's not all positive, there's negative and positives associated with the school. Native boys did die here. Um, I can't imagine being kind of taken from your home that you, you've known. So that's negative in its aspect, kind of being pulled out from your tradition, from your home, from your family, and kind of being forced into this kind of white colonial education, European education. But at the same time, positives that come from in my opinion, from the school here, is a lot of these boys learn how to read and write. And the boys that went to school here who learned how to read and write, took that education back to our community and used that knowledge, for example, to petition for our rights. This is a bone right here. Some nails. Well, this is pretty cool. This is a uh, pipe stem that we find Yeah. a lot of. It's a mini ball, a union, three ring. Civil War. Well, it actually looks like it was whittled. Yeah. You know, on the top. We found a few glass flakes where um, some of the boys probably were practicing with glass, and you can actually make tools out of glass. And we found uh, blue glass beads, uh, which were uh, used in adornment uh, on clothing. Uh, we found a piece of copper, which may have also been a, uh, a piece of adornment. Uh, we found some napped uh, wine bottle glass, so that's glass that would, would have been uh, flaked and used and made into tools the same way that they would have made uh, stone tools uh, before and after contact. Originally I sorted into different types, like I had the glass and the ceramics and the bone and the metal all in different little trays and I'm just doing them one step at a time. Uh, this is a piece of metal. Uh, you can see the decaying orange bit right there. Oyster, bone, these um, wine bottle glass, flat window glass, these other type of glasses, another brush, the metal. From the artifacts that we're seeing, we're seeing that they're still retaining their, um, their concepts of their identity, um, despite being in this very European American setting. So these are a couple of pieces here. Um, that have, you can see where those flakes, uh, or similar flakes would have been on the glass as they're trying to get it down to a sharp working edge that they can use as a scraper or as a knife or some other kind of tool, sharp tool. Um, that you can see that, you know, the similarities in how the glass is broken off here with how the stone is chipped off the edge here to form an edge. 